So there we go. We should be uh, appearing live. I'm here with Garth this morning. Good morning, Garth. Good morning, Paul. It's great to be with you on this uh, rather, it was rather frosty looking out the window, but it's also rather beautiful. It is. Lovely sunshine this morning. We were we were ambling about, it was on a day off yesterday, and we were ambling about um, doing our exercise and uh it, it's quite interesting when the sun shines people are very eager to talk to you i think that's probably increased over time anyway true yeah <laughs> that people even the most introverted introverts are now desperate to talk to somebody <laughs> so interesting today um we've got a lesser festival we remember george herbert who was a a, a minister and a poet and uh, is responsible for a lot of the thought about how parish ministry in its ideal, if I dare say, Miss Marple mode, is meant to work, <laughs> of the, the vicar doing his pastoral visiting in the afternoon and all of that sort of stuff. And he worked in a very small parish which had lots of curates. <laughs> um, and so it's there's lots of discussion nowadays, isn't there, about how um, we need to move on, change from that model. It's really interesting. So our readings today are Psalm 63 and John 6, uh, chapter, uh, <laughs> John 6, verses 27 to 40. So as we come to prayer this morning, let's take a moment to, if you can look outside, to just rejoice in that blue sky. The dome of the heavens above us. Picture what's beyond it, the vastness of the creation that is beyond the, that blue. So come, Lord, just give us a sense of, of overwhelming joy at the wonder of your creation. Come, Lord. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. O blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, Sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. It brings us to Psalm 63. Garth and I will read it verse by verse. O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand shall hold me fast. But those who seek my soul to destroy it shall go down to the depths of the earth. Let them fall by the edge of the sword and become a portion for jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. 
All those who swear by him shall be glad. For the mouth of those who seek lie, speak lies shall be stopped. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. And so our reading from John chapter 6 and verses 27 through to verse 40. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then? so that we may see it and believe you. What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the father gives me will come to me. And anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. But I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my father, that all who see the son and believe in him may have eternal life. And I will raise them up on the last day. An interesting parallel with the woman at the well, Paul. I noticed that. I had had that moment of going, oh, we've gone back. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Just a few chapters on, isn't it? It's, it's, it's that interesting, sir, give us this bread. So give me this bread. It was that's so those were her words, weren't they? Give yeah. give me this bread. This, this water that yeah. I might not thirst. Water, yeah. sorry, yes, absolutely sorry. And uh, yeah, and that focus on that focus on Jesus giving us what we need. I think that's a, a, a word for this moment, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, that that God does give us all we need, even though we might feel, as with Moses and the people of Israel in the desert, that it wasn't it, what we were being given wasn't enough but he is enough. Mm -hmm. Mm. So let's hold to that this morning, that Jesus is the bread that we need. Also struck by a seeking to do, as Jesus said, I only do the will of him who sent me. True. Yeah. As we look to the future, perhaps also we can hold to that as we look to how we come out of this situation we're now in how do we move forward in holding to the the will of our heavenly father so to you O lord i lift up my soul oh my god in you i trust you are the god of my salvation to you O lord i lift up my soul in you i hope all the day long Oh, my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, in you I trust. Mm -hmm. I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel who has come to his people and set them free. 
He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. reflect back on on John 4 on the woman at the well someone ostracized by her community and therefore coming to draw water in the heat of the day Jesus used her to bring good news to a village He gave her water that gave her life. He gives us bread that gives us life. Lord, may we hold to you this day. As we journey yeah. through Lent, as we journey through uh, this place and time in history that we're set, Lord, may we hold more and more tightly to you as we explore what the future holds, Lord, may you be our rock and our foundation. Mm. May you be our guide and our shield. Lord, you give us promise to give us all that we need. Lord, help us to rest in that. Lord, bless us by your spirit. Oh, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our world that is facing this massive COVID pandemic. And in some places, people are losing a fight and others, people seem to be at least holding ground. In our own nation, Lord, we, we just bring before you the whole fight against the pandemic, against the COVID virus. We thank you, Lord, for those scientists and doctors and medical personnel that have been able to work hard over the last year to come up with the vaccines that seem to be working. And so, Father, we, we give you thanks for them and we pray for those involved in the vaccination program, in our health centers and surgeries, in, in the NHS um, vaccination centers that have been set up in various places. We pray, Father, that you would protect and keep safe the workers who are meeting with the public face to face day in and day out. We pray that you protect their families. And Father, we pray that as our government considers ways out of the lockdown in a, in a roadmap that is safe, that so too, Lord, we as a, as, as a nation would, be, would work together to make sure that uh, we, we come out of it safely. And Father, for those of us that minister in your name during this time, I pray that we might be able to speak your peace and your hope into the hearts and lives of people around us. That where some might be fearful and apprehensive, 
that, Lord, we might be able to speak to them of the hope that we have in Christ and the safety that we have in him. And that, Father, as the light that shines in the darkness, we might see the darkness and gloom dispelled. And just as we move towards Easter and the celebration of Jesus' resurrection, so too may we move in our own lives as well, Lord, towards that light of Christ shining in brightly, dispelling the darkness from our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the practical outworking of, of, of many things. We pray for our government, for our Chancellor of the Exchequer this week as, as we move towards looking to to what our budget needs to do over mm. over the coming um, year over the coming season that is to come oh lord help us to have generous hearts help us to have hearts that seek to to serve others and not just ourselves lord may we Seek to follow your guidance, your way, as we look to how we use the resources that we have and how we look mm. to deal with the, the, the enormous economic costs that we've incurred over these, this past year. Whilst remaining mindful of those who are less fortunate than us. So, oh Lord, may we know that we are but stewards of the resources that you give us. That we hold them for a time, but all things are yours. Our oh Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Father, today we continue to pray for all those who are offering themselves for ministry and those who are preparing for ministry. Father, we, we thank you that there are more ordinances coming through this year. And we just pray, Heavenly Father, that as the church continues to come to terms with and tries to experiment, not experiment, Lord, tries new forms of ministry, that, Lord, we might be guided by your Holy Spirit. That, and also, Lord, we might have the courage uh, to be able to take that step out in faith that, Lord, for some of us, some of these areas of ministry and new ways of doing them uh, make us vulnerable. And there are many that feel insecure through it all. But, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have called people with different types of gifts and you give different types of ministries. And we pray that as the whole body of Christ, as we exercise the ministry that you've given to us, that so too we might see the love of God being shared and the word of Christ being shared and that people might come to see Jesus and believe in him as we read in our gospel story this morning. Mm -hmm. That they too might be able to cry, Lord, give us to the spread of life. And so, Father, we pray for those in our diocese and in our, in, in our theological training colleges and other training programs who are imparting education and seeing, overseeing the formation of ministry. Pray particularly for John Fitzmorris and the vocational team in our own diocese at this time. Mm -hmm. For Doug and the reader training uh, program in our diocese. Lord, in your mercy. Oh, hear our prayer. our prayer. And all as a diocese as a whole, we pray for um, the finance team. We, we think mm. of the work they do to support the vision of the diocese and, and we pray your vision for us. Lord, we, we pray that as they steward the resources that we have, that they may be a, a blessing that we don't see them as a shackle, but as, as enablers, as those who help to facilitate what we're trying to do. 
So Lord, we do pray for them um, in the diocesan office or mostly working from home at the moment and, and for the support they give to parishes. We pray for, for Helen Archer-Smith, for, for Ryan Bates, for Joe Burr and Jessica Lambert and for Sharon Kennedy. Lord, we thank you for the work they do and for the information that they provide to us to help us to um, work through how we are your church in the place that you've set us. Our Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And as we pray for dioceses around our world, well, today we pray for near neighbours. Um, we pray for the Diocese of Armagh in Ireland, Bishop John McDowell. Lord, we do pray for, for them in, in Ireland and particularly uh, for diocese and places in Ireland at the moment with the challenges that we face with them being very much on the front line of the issues related to Brexit. Lord, we pray for peace to reign in that place. Uh, we pray that uh, you will uh, strengthen and uphold them in all they do as they work in, in that beautiful part of of the um in that beautiful part of europe our lord in your mercy hear our prayer so let's just take a moment to hold before our lord those that are close to us um, perhaps close to us in our hearts but not close to us uh, physically Let us hold up to God, lift up to God, those who need to know his healing this day. Those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Lift up those who's Life's journey is nearing its end, particularly in situations where we would long to be close to them but can't be. We do give thanks for all of those who minister and care for those in um, in our hospitals, in our hospices, in our care homes. Lord, may your hand be there. Oh Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Hear prayer. Our prayer. So Lord, go before us in the work of this day. Lord, as we uh, whether this is a day of rest for us or a day of activity and work, Lord, may you be with us in finding joy in our activity. To King of glory, King of peace, who called your servant George Herbert from the pursuit of worldly honours to be a priest in the temple of his God and King. Grant us also the grace to offer ourselves with singleness of heart in humble obedience to your service through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us his compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. I was uh, pondering as you, you prayed about ordinance and uh, uh, often people get confused, particularly in our diocese where we're trying to reduce clergy numbers in certain areas about why we would be praying for more 
uh, vocations, but uh, both you and I represent the tsunami of retirements that's coming up. We're not retiring imminently, <laughs> <laughs> but in the fullness of time, we will. And there's quite a lot of people of that be, age group. Yeah. And it's, it's important to get the next generation of ministry up and running. Yes, I, I absolutely. And I think that is quite key, isn't it? I, I'm, I'm very focused on that at the moment about how do we make sure that there needs to be a bit of a leap of, of age group of, of ministers and leaders in our churches. Um, uh, uh, yeah, may I decrease as, as you increase it. We need to be doing the finding ways to do that in new and creative ways, don't we? Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Interesting. So, so, so ordinations and vocations are still very important that we we find those um and not being ageist but really important that we find those in in younger people true um, yeah yeah fascinating so thank you for being with us this morning um do pray that you'll be with us tomorrow either with uh, garth over in with the ipsley team uh go to ipsley.org and you'll find uh, information about the services um or the service or services that are taking place across that team actually so there are there are multiple services taking place online in different ways across the ipsley team or with us at our youtube channel the service will stream um at 10 30 tomorrow when somebody's done a bit of work to actually finish it off <laughs> guilty um so uh, yeah, do come and join us in that and, and do and, and perhaps check out other things that are happening in different churches, um, different people providing different online provision. But uh, it's always good to have people with us in this context, which perhaps brings us together in a different way. Absolutely. Good. Good. I hope you have a great day. Do try and get outside and enjoy the, the weather that we're having at the moment. It's all rather lovely. So hopefully and hopefully catch up with you all uh, soon. Thank you, Garth. Thank you, Paul, and bless you all.